historic flooding on the main stem of the Ohio River in 1937 led Congress to pass legislation authorizing Summersville. Construction began in 1960 and was completed in 1966 at a cost of $48 million. And it actually started in 1932 when they were planning, trying to select a uh, site for the dam. At Summersville, rated very highly because of the uh, protection for the Kanoa Valley. The Congress passed the uh, Flood Control Act of 1938, and because Summersville had such priority, it was included in that bill. And then the various uh, construction companies, with all of their people, prepared for the bids, which was a tremendous job. All of jobs like this are bid on cubic yards. It costs so much for the dirt, it costs so much for the first P rock, they call it, in the first part of the dam, then the outer part, the bigger rock, and so forth, how much it's going to cost to move that rock from up on top of the mountain to the dam. That was a lot of money spent in there before the dam even started. Oh, yes. Before the key way even started or anything else. They had, they, we had to clear all of it. It was all the woods. It looked just like a regular mountain. I mean, any of those mountains, if you look across and look right up there at that mountain, that's exactly what it looked like. And they started cutting timber. Then they started blasting and dozing and cutting the whole road out, right out of the side of the mountain. And I was uh, pretty young then, about 19, 20. I uh, hired on with uh, Jay Jones. They'd been working in here since 59, Jones did, but I didn't go to work for them until up in the fall of 60. The first contractor to come in here was an outfit out of Kentucky. They did all the grubbing. And uh, they was the first people in here. They come in here probably close to a year before the work got started. We came to Summersville to do the clearing. We moved here from uh, Scottsville, Kentucky, and we brought six families here from Pennsylvania and two families from Kentucky, and then all the rest of the 28 was hired locally. It was rough territory to work in. <laughs> None of New 19 was through here. All this equipment was hauled in here by railroad. It came into Drennan. As I recall, what they had was what, what was known as an athy wagon. Eighth, we eighth. call them lizard trucks now. Lizard. When they first started out, they had them old athy wagons. They brought old athy wagons in here. And they couldn't pull the mountain. They couldn't pull that hill. They had to have a dozer behind them. That's when they bought them new haul pikes from California, had them shipped in. I paid a hundred thousand dollars a piece for a man. Western Construction was the world's largest construction company at the time. And Hubert Evers, back then he was an engineer. He actually sat down himself and put all the specs together of what he wanted in the dump truck for here to go down those haul roads companies that built heavy equipment like dozers and graders and dump trucks and shovels. He had the power that he, if he wanted something, they would build it for him. And then they got these new pans that were experimental. Boy, they were fast. They had a, a V16 engine in front and a V8 engine in the back. And them things would haul 50 yards. And them haul pikes were the same thing and they were fast. The haul packs were the main thing. That was their baby. The haul packs and the TSS 40 scrapers. That scraper was built specially for here. It's mind boggling if you really think about what had to be here on site and how far they had to go to get a lot of it. I 
started in the tunnel in late 1960. The tunnel was drilled from both ends at the same time. When we got to where they thought they were through, I drilled the first hole from the upper portal through into the lower portal and uh, they only missed centers by about 16 inches, which I thought was terrific because there's curves in both ends of the tunnel. After we drilled and shot the tunnel, we had the crew come in and buck it out. Then we poured the inverts. On top of the inverts, we set a hydraulic form that could be jacked out to the size of the tunnel. We concreted the tunnel, then we did the three outlets at the lower end. Then we came back and, and did the concrete on the upper end. After that was done, I went to work for Western running a drill. And I drilled, and then I'd work in the powder crew and we drilled and blasted enough rock to make the dam what it is today. Of course, we moved a lot of mountaintops. We had a big rock quarry right there where the picnic area is now, and the offices, and right on out down where you go down to the conduits, that was all rock quarry. And that was all drilled and shot and, and, and all the way down in front of the, the, the two houses, which were the Johnson houses. Uh, that was all rock quarry and out where the spillway is. It was just dirt down the middle and rocks on the side. They hauled dirt down the middle with the scrapers and it had to be a certain kind of clay. We got some up way, way away from there. There's a road that turns down right past the uh, picnic area and goes down. That's where we used to uh, haul from back up in them uh, hollows back there and they had a big clay pit That's where they got all their clay to line the, uh, the core when they, when they dug the core out. That was the main steel plug, was that core. It was tough drilling when we drilled that. We had to drill on one and a half to one, and we had to turn the drill over to get the angle on the, on the slope for the core trench, and that core trench was filled with clay. The core that went through the middle with the dirt followed that tunnel that they cut all the way to the top of the mountain. There was a clay core, and then there's real fine sand on one side and on the other side. And this time was a little bit of cork, uh, down, scrape a wide load of gravel. On the outside of it, this, it's all hard sandstone rock, every bit of it. And then you go into the lesser and lesser and lesser and lesser until you get to the core. And it's like that on both sides. It's pretty well built. Everybody got along really well. The Corps of Engineers made a safe project out of it because they were in charge of the project. It's a magnificent marvel as, as far as I'm concerned. It, it is one of the best things that ever happened to West Virginia. For those of us operating the dam today, not much has changed. We monitor the same river gauges, we push the same buttons, and we work the same levers that were used 50 years ago. What may not have been evident at the time, that nearly one million visitors would, would come to the lake each year. That the water quality would be so clear and clean against the sandstone cliffs. That activities such as rock climbing, scuba diving, kayaking, and paddle boarding would draw huge numbers of visitors to the lake. That whitewater rafting on the Gauley River would someday be an authorized reason to adjust flows from the dam.
With the many purposes and benefits of Summersville Dam and Lake, there is something here for just about anyone. I think it's important to remember that the cooperation and partnering and being good neighbors is what brought us to this point and what will get us through the next 50 years.